Hi, welcome to Overcome America Hair Loss. My name is Valerie Fuentes. I'm your host, and today I'm with Kelly Scott. She's an Australian journalist with a passion for writing about sex and relationships. This 34-year-old developed androgenetic alopecia at 27 and has been wearing alternative hair for the past two years. Kelly believes that accepting hair loss rather than trying to cure it is the best way to find peace. Realizing that there are thousands of other women that are going through the same thing and leaning into that community for support has been the biggest blessing for her sharing this publicly. And Kelly, that's exactly why I decided to call you because I <laughs> love what you've created, the community that you've created by sharing your story and being so authentic. So thank you so much for accepting my invitation. Thank you for having me. Of course. So let's get started with um, how did you learn about your hair loss? Was it was it something that happened suddenly that it started, you know, slowly? So I've always had uh, quite fine and thin hair. So my whole life it's been a struggle to get that volume that, you know, all the Pantene commercial ads have. Um, And so it would go through cycles where it would be, you know, a little crappy and then back to normal for me. But at 27, I um, started seeing a new hairdresser where I was living at the time and we're actually best friends now. In fact, she moved into state with me um, to sort of turn her you know, have a new opportunity at life and followed me. So over that time, I think it was one or two years, you know, I noticed my hair was thinning, but she was the one who really called it out um, as a friend and a hairdresser and said, yeah, it's at the point now that I think you should start exploring what's going on. Um, They started the process of seeing endocrinologists, trichologists, dermatologists. Mm -hmm. I think I saw seven specialists in total. Um, by the end of this journey Um, and it was through not largely that I felt like none of those specialists were particularly helpful but a lot of self-education I did you know researching online Dr Google um, it twigged for me that my hair loss began at 27 when I changed contraceptive pills Mm. been on the same birth control since 16 and that kind of pill I was on had an androgen blocking effect so I originally went on it for acne and then just stayed on it for the birth control benefits. Mm -hmm. And in my late 20s, um, a GP where I was living um, at the time said, you don't need to be on this anymore. Like your skin's fine. It has a slightly higher blood clot risk. Let's just get you on a basic um, birth control pill. And so, you know, after a few months, the hair loss began. Of course, I only put two and two together, you know, once I'd educated myself a year or two later. Um, And so when I figured that out, I immediately swapped back to my old pill. And yes, that did slow the hair loss, but it didn't fully stop it. And quite a lot of the damage was done. And it's difficult talking about this because I don't want people to take this on as medical advice because A, I don't know if it was the fact that I was ever on that birth control. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I stopped it. I don't know if it was the fact I started the different birth control and we will never know because Mm -hmm. unfortunately, not not enough resources go into researching women's hair loss but eventually we'll have a better picture I think Mm -hmm. something to do with hormones essentially Um, I could have even already had androgenic alopecia and the pill was masked all that time although it doesn't run in my family which typically it would if that was the case so that started me figuring out what the hell was going on (laughs) okay so when did you start wearing hair Well, once I realised what androgenic alopecia was and that there was essentially not many treatment options or at least not many that were very effective, Mm -hmm. uh, I started looking for a cosmetic solution Mm -hmm. and learned about toppers. Mm -hmm. So I'm wearing today, I sort of, I wear toppers and wigs, but I love wigs because you can just throw them up. You know, I've got like a little bit of a mullet left behind. Yeah. (laughs) So toppers are are great too. Yeah, you feel me. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, once I discovered what toppers were, I think that was a really nice way for me to transition into mm-hmm. wearing because it's a little uh, less dramatic, I guess. Right. Than wearing. There's all that stigma attached to wigs, so this mm-hmm. felt like a step, kind of like extensions. And literally, like I struggled with that a lot, coming to accept that this was my only option. Mm-hmm. Um, I was just rocking with what I had, but I wasn't happy with that. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was a lot of looking at social media and the few girls that were already out and proud about their top of wearing and getting mm-hmm. strength. And then 
just researching, you know, all the options. And then when I had my first topper, I put it on and I've never looked back. It like completely changed my thinking about everything. All of a sudden I was like, oh my God, how have I not been wearing these? Right, right. <laughs> um, my hair is so amazing now. Like this is a blessing. And just making that decision and taking control just changed my whole attitude. Mm-hmm. I basically loving hair loss then. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well. Yeah. Yeah. And I really think it's a matter of choice, right? And not hiding. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. and that's what it's been for me lately. So at the beginning, obviously I, I got the first one thinking that I wanted to hide the condition, but now it's a choice. Mm-hmm. It's a, yeah. a life that I want to live and I want to, you know, get up and be ready to go and not have to worry about trying to figure out my hair locks and how am I going to hide this? And mm. does it look decent enough? Cause I also still have hair, but it's not something it's not. Like, I don't have enough to feel comfortable. And yeah. so I get to buy this hair to feel comfortable. But it's a yeah. choice now. It's not, I'm not hiding. I'm not trying to pretend that it's not there. It's just, I want to live my life this way. I want to be happy. I, I work out every day, so it would be so hard for me um, to not have this, right? Because mm-hmm. I will have to, like, wash it every day and style it because I've been sharing with everyone that as you know like when we have this very little hair if you don't wash it every day then you end up with you know all the clumps and like (laughs) little graceful it's (laughs) terrible so yeah it's just it's a matter of when I'm what kind of life do I want to live and and really like you said breaking the stigma of this is an accessory for us right yes like earrings and anything else hundred percent. We went to a hen's do on Saturday and my girlfriend who doesn't have any hair loss at all has quite amazing hair said, you know, I feel like doing something different. Can I borrow your red wig? And so she wore the red wig to this hen's do. And I have another friend who attended this event and she wears a topper. And there was a point in the day where someone that didn't know her that well was complimenting her hair. And she said, Oh yeah, thanks. It's one of Kelly's wigs. And she's like, what do you mean? It's one of Kelly's wigs. And <laughs> and then our other friend said oh and I'm wearing a topper and this girl was like what what's going on this isn't your hair (laughs) and you know so for her it is an accessory and I just love seeing people without hair loss embrace it as well like all the celebrities are now um, because I think a lot for us to Mm -hmm. make it um, less of a weird creepy thing that you have to do because you've got some medical situation going on Mm mm-hmm so tell me what made you make the decision to go public. So when I got the topper and I was in love with it and I realised I was going to be wearing it a lot, including to work, I thought, oh, I'm going to be wearing this. And even though my friends and family generally knew about my hair loss, um, it's not something I'd bothered to share with my colleagues, but I am a very open book. But I thought if I just post about this on Instagram where a lot of them follow me, they're going to see it, digest it without me having to have that full on conversation when I walk into work with different, better hair. And so I did that and, you know, I made a post saying, if this is too long to read, if you're too busy, just know I'm wearing hair now and get over it. Like it's amazing. <laughs> um, but if you want to know more, this is my hair loss story. And then so a couple of people at work maybe came up and complimented me or just said, oh, how does that work? Like they couldn't really understand. Like does it look really pretty good um and I just I know that's not right for everybody because not everybody is active on social media or feels comfortable sharing that stuff on social media but for me it just made life so much easier the transition so much easier Mm -hmm. so how far into your hair loss journey was that so I've been wearing hair for 27 so yeah so it was about four or five years into it um dealing with that gradual hair loss, um, struggling, yeah, to make my thin hair look anything that made me feel beautiful. Um, So it took a while. Like it was a process for sure. I mean, for some of that time I didn't even realise what was going on, but I wish I'd done it sooner um, because it just doesn't really add to your life. It just took away the burden of my hair, if that makes sense. Right. Um, And I felt so empowered rather than this thing that was just happening to me, I was making it work for me and I was taking back control. Mm -hmm. 
the best thing to come out of this is being able to make people realize it's not a big deal. Like, mm -hmm. and your solution might not be wearing a wig. Your solution might be going an epic buzz cut and looking like Demi Moore, yeah. you know, how hot she looked in the early 2000s with her buzz cut. Um, or, you know, wearing a scarf or just working with what you've got. Like, I don't know, it's just you've got to make some kind of decision mm -hmm. helpful, I find. Right. I think, I think that's great advice because, like you said, all of us are different and feel comfortable different ways. For instance, um, I just interviewed um, someone that she has, she, like you said, she just did the bus get and she's completely bald now and she loves it. And we were talking about how different we are because I told her, I don't know that I'll ever be able to do that. But it's still, it's so cool that, that, you know, we're at the same place because we believe we feel the same way. Yeah. She's like completely okay being completely bold and I'm completely okay wearing hair. And so we're trying to show to everyone that no matter when you're, where you're at in this and, and how you feel about hair, it's, a, it's not about the way you look, but how you feel. So like, are you loving yourself? Are you accepting yourself? Um, that's what matters, right? Because however you feel on the inside, that's what's going to project in the outside. And that's what your life is going to look like and what you're going to experience. So it all comes from, from inside. Yeah. It's not a cliche when people say, you know, confidence is the sexiest quality you can have, although it sounds like a cliche, but it's so true because people... One of the biggest things about wearing hair is people are worried, is it going to look natural? Are people going to know I'm wearing a wig? Well, I don't really have that issue because I don't care if people know about that. And once you realise that that doesn't matter, people look to you for cues. So if you're really upset about your hair loss and you're telling everyone about that and you're really down about that, they're going to see it as a big issue as well. If you're lighthearted about your hair loss and carefree, they will take your lead because they don't understand hair loss. They don't have it personally. Mm -hmm up to you to lead the way um you know it doesn't have to be this oh you went through this horrible thing and you've turned it around for yourself it's like no actually this little thing happened to me and you know I turned it around with a a little trick like it wasn't this big life-changing experience mm -hmm. and I without trying to dismiss for people that it can be really hard I mean people can experience depression over this um it can really full-on consequences and I understand that so it's not always as easy as just flicking a switch and making a choice right. but I think knowing that other people have managed to do that can be helpful in your journey right right and so on that note what what did you do to get you to the other side like how did you go from that you know shock of this is what's happening to accepting to hey here I am yeah, I think I try to articulate this for people because I do get asked it a lot. So I kind of came up with this thing called the three steps. It's a little bit corny and it's probably not really that well thought out, but it's the best way I can explain what I did. So step one was just getting real with myself. So mm -hmm. yeah, you're going to want to see all the specialists and you're going to want to do all your research because that's human nature. Mm -hmm. But once you get to the point that you realize, actually, I just need to accept this. There's not a lot I can do about it. That's getting real with yourself. And I think when you do that, it opens the door to take steps that are much more realistic, like getting a wig, for example. Mm -hmm. um, so then step two is just taking control and making a decision, whatever that decision is for you. For me, it was getting a topper. As I mentioned earlier, for you, it might be getting a buzz cut. It doesn't even have to be a big decision. Maybe it's just telling one person in your life that you trust what's going on with you. I think whatever you do, as long as it's something that you're taking action and you're taking control of your hair loss and not the other way around, you're really helping to push yourself forward. Mm -hmm. From there, it's about not making it a big deal. As I said, like follow all the girls on social media and all the women with hair loss, expose yourself to that because the more you're exposed to it, the more normal it becomes for you. And then you can then in turn analyze it for the other people in your life who aren't maybe following, you know, 500 bald girls on Instagram. <laughs> your attitude will reflect that it's not a big deal. You know, maybe when you see a woman with a shaved head walking down the street and you're with some friends and you can be like, how beautiful does that woman look? Just little things, I think that help it norm that normalizing it for you is most important but i think that has a flow on effect to the people around you 
Right, right. And that's exactly <laughs> why I created this because I want that. I want people to to get that this is not it's not a big deal, right? Yeah. And it's also coming from um I saw a lot of people, a lot of women being depressed, you know, the groups that I joined, you know, trying mm -hmm. to help myself. And I realized that those groups sometimes were not helping me because it will make me even more depressed because, you know, people complain and they're so sad. And it's like, it's this noble effect of, you know, this sucks. Uh, do you have any answers? And everybody goes, no, I don't have any answers. There is no cure. And like, it's just a negativity and gross. Mm -hmm. and doesn't help. <laughs> so I, I, agree. I, I need to do something. So we are all encouraging each other and we are supporting each other and showing each other that we get to live our life no matter what. How can yeah. I do it? And, and so that's part of the reason why I did this because I, I hear you as, yeah. It's awesome. And the groups, like they're a catch-22, right? Because they are so great for connecting women and, you know, women need that support. But I found the same as you that once I was far along enough in my journey, like progressed enough that I basically didn't give a fuck about my health anymore, mm -hmm. I had to like leave those groups because yeah. I was in the headspace. So I think they serve their purpose for a time or if you use them, you know, to maybe be that uplifting voice. Mm -hmm. um, but I think there are risks associated with being in them at the wrong time in your journey. Yeah, absolutely. And so I know that you took initiative and you created your own in person in Australia. So tell me about that experience. Uh, the meetups? Yeah. Yeah. So I think I'd been wearing hair for a year and I'd noticed a lot of, well, some of the girls I'd connected with were from my local area. So I thought, let's get some of us together, which was very scary because you hear all the horror stories about meeting your internet friends in real life. And <laughs> Anyway, I'm still here. <laughs> um, you made it. Meet up. <laughs> and there was a handful of ladies there and they were all amazing, like just total badass women. And they were all normal, in my opinion, intelligent, beautiful. I couldn't tell who was wearing hair and who hadn't. There was women who'd been there who were wearing hair for a decade. Like they were experts. And I was looking at their pieces thinking, shit, I really need to up my game. And <laughs> <laughs> another four meetups since then and so we had one just the other weekend and it was our biggest yet I think it was about 23 24 25 girls I was trying to count everyone at one point but people were kind of flowing in and out um, and they're a really informal day where everyone just comes along has a few wines or a few cokes if they don't drink and some food and we talk about life and hair and they always go on well into the night like we normally start at lunchtime and I'm rolling home after dinner like they're such a fun day and I think that whenever I'm sad about my hair loss which is very rare these days but I know a lot of people experience it more often than I do I just think about those women that literally live you know within an hour of my postcode who are going through exactly what I'm going through and pushing through that just makes it so much easier and they're now friends like a lot of the girls I've become really close with and they're just part of my social circle so hair loss is even more normalized for me and normalized for my other friends who like at that hens party met a couple of them and were like had never heard of toppers before didn't realize girls were getting around wearing wigs next time they see someone with, someone with amazing hair they might question whether it's real or not <laughs> <laughs> oh wow okay so i want to know do you have any projects coming as far as you know supporting women with hair loss or are you just going to keep it to social media so far, I've just kept it to social media. I mean, yeah. it's for me, it's a hobby. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy posting about my hair and I enjoy posting anecdotes, you know, about having confidence wearing hair. That's the main game for me. Um, but, you know, my full-time job is journalism and I'm very passionate, you mentioned, about writing about sex and relationships. So I don't want the hair world to overtake um, what I'm doing in this other space because that's really important to me. But it's funny how connected all of those things are because one of my main goals with writing about sex and relationships is helping women have better sex because I think we often get the raw end of the deal and it's very much about female empowerment and mm -hmm. it's kind of the same thing I'm doing with hair loss. I want mm -hmm. women to feel amazing within themselves mm -hmm. and hair is just one of the million things that uh, 
can make us not feel so great. And we have so much pressure to look perfect, um, which is kind of what's funny about wearing wigs, right? Because I do love how they look. And then some people say, well, if you were really embracing hair loss, you just, you'd go a natural. But I don't think that's quite true for me. I think that's true for some women and I'm so happy whenever I see a woman completely rocking her wispy locks or her buzzed head um but for me it's about having the hair I never had before I feel so lucky so lucky to have loss otherwise I'd still be getting around my shitty <laughs> even if I didn't have loss do you know what I mean so yeah. I I haven't tried different colors or styles or anything like that yet like I've been wearing the no. same style same color yeah the whole time and now as I'm watching you guys, I'm getting all excited. I'm, you know, yes. opportunities that I was, yeah. That is the best part. Like I can't, and <laughs> at work, one day I'm a brunette, the next time I'm blonde, the next time I'm redhead. Sometimes it's short, sometimes it's long. People just accept it now. For a while, there'd be a couple of people like, oh, nice haircut. And then they'd see me again and think, oh. And now they just, they must realize. Not everyone asks. I think yeah. they just work it out on their own. So I'm so glad that you brought up um, about your work because I did wanted to ask you about relationships and hair loss because I think that's one of the biggest struggles that we have. And I don't yeah. think that a lot of women our age are sharing about hair loss. So because of that, because they're afraid of telling their partners, they're mm. afraid of, you know, opening up to whoever they're dating and all that stuff. Um, yeah. Was it, was your hair, did your hair loss affect your relationships? So I was with my partner before I was wearing hair. My hair loss had started, but I think he was there for kind of the end of the time where I was figuring all out what was going on and seeing specialists. And I sat him down one day and said, look, I've kind of mentioned to you before that I have a bit of hair loss. It's actually getting worse. I'm going to start wearing alternative hair. That's it. Like I didn't ask for his permission. I didn't ask if he was okay with it. I just let him know because I knew once I got a topper, obviously it would look different. And he said, I'm really happy for you. I'm glad you're not going to go down these route, the route of trying different drugs that probably won't work. Um, and you know, I, I think he's an amazing, beautiful, supportive partner, but I also don't want to start praising men in particular for doing the bare minimum because your partner should support you and be okay with that um and i see that a lot like husbands and boyfriends getting put on pedestals for being so accepting of your hair loss and i just think well why shouldn't they be exactly. um not to take away from the fact that i love him and i love the support that he's given me mm -hmm. um but you know men have hair loss much more commonly or at least much more openly than women and we don't make a big deal about hooking up with a bald guy so I think we all just need to calm down about men and their support. <laughs> um, so if you are afraid to tell your partner, I would actually be asking yourself, why is that? Because if you think your partner is going to reject you because of that, then that's probably more an issue with your relationship than your hair loss. I know it's hard. Um, and I've told women before that if they are struggling with it, to treat it as a test. If you are worried about rejection over something like that, then you probably need to test your partner on it because I think that's dangerous that you can't be so open about that. And I'm not a relationships expert. So again, I'm not giving you advice about what to do, but these people that love you won't change their feelings on you unless, you know, that love is not strong enough or that connection is not strong enough or they're mm -hmm. so shallow. I don't know, all the awful things you don't want in a relationship. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, I mean, I have, it's crossed my mind. Like if my partner and I were to split, what would I do in the dating world? And I think I would take a very similar approach that I have with my social media and be quite open about it from the start. Um, I'm not really interested in dating someone for a couple of months and then revealing this thing and making it a big deal. Like I just want it to be no biggie from the start. Right. Oh, so, so you will tell them from the beginning? If, that, if I'm put in that position of dating again, yeah, definitely. Okay. I love that. I think it would awesome. be casual, then, right? We'd go on a date, and then the next day they'd be wearing different hair. And maybe they'd <laughs> ask, oh, yeah, I wear wigs. Like, get yeah. with the program, dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is who you get to date. <laughs> so what will you tell yourself now, knowing that you know now? What would you tell yourself, the 
you know, 27 year old Kelly, what would you do? What would you have done differently? If you could go back to hurry up and find a good hair piece um, that you're actually going to be happier than before you had hair loss. Mm -hmm. And you're going to help a lot of other women um, and find amazing friends, like amazing friends that I never would have met without this. My world was small compared to what it is now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're giving me chills. <laughs> <laughs> exactly how I feel and yes with that I really want to acknowledge you for everything you're doing for our community because your impact is huge I don't know that you realize it because I don't know it like if being in Australia you do realize how many followers you have here in the states because mm -hmm. I know so many people that look up to you and myself included <laughs> oh, so that's thank you so much for giving us um showing us that we get to be happy and that we get to live our lives and you know that we get to have fun with us i think that's the yeah. key the most key part of your message and what i love so much is that you're showing us that we get to have have fun with it so yeah. thank you so much kelly well thank you when you first reached out to me i wasn't quite sure what this was all about but it actually became clear pretty quickly that your uh goal is the same as mine and it's so nice to like meet someone else who is trying to achieve the same thing and help people realize that yeah hair loss can be fun i don't know if people think that sentence makes sense but it can. <laughs> no. um so i'm, I'm, really can't believe I'm saying this after all this year <laughs> it's true <laughs> yeah yeah, no, I'm really happy to have met you and I think what you're doing is awesome. Oh, thank you, Kelly. And everybody, uh, please make sure to join the Facebook group. Like Kelly said, community is so important and mm -hmm. I want everybody to feel supported uh, and be, have conversations in a positive way because my intention with us is to create a community uh, where you get to feel happy, share your wins, you know, ask questions, but always, trying to highlight the good about your hair loss because there are, there is good about this situation. So I'll see you guys on the Facebook group and on the next interview. Thank you, Kelly. Thanks, Valerie. Bye.